In the meantime, former president Goodluck Jonathan has called for a stop to the practice of off-season elections in Nigeria. He expressed the concern that if the country continued with off-season polls, a time would come when the presidential election might become an off-cycle election. Jonathan stated this during an interaction with newsmen after voting in Saturday's off-cycle Bielsa State governorship election at Ward 13 Utoke, Odia local government area. He charged and urged the National Assembly to ensure the practice of off-season election was blocked, describing it as odd and not a global best practice. The former president, while congratulating Bielsa, Imo and Kogi states for the peaceful conduct of the polls, had this to say. Congratulate uh, the three states that have elections today, Ayelsa State, Imo uh, State and Kogi State, and wish Kevin all these states successful elections, successful <laughs> conduct of elections. But basically, because this is an off-season election, and uh, I, I get worried about the issue of off-season elections, and I will use this unique opportunity to appeal with the National Assembly that we need to block of the election. It's very odd. It's not a global best practice. A country can have, a, a, can elect their people at different times, like America and some countries. They do not elect everybody at the same time. But any time they go on to conduct the election, they elect everybody that's supposed to be elected. If we continue with this trend of off-season elections, based on the interpretation of our laws by the judicial officer, it will come to a time that the presidential election in the region may be off-season. Probably that's the time that all of you media people and others should be worried. Every look at the American system, everybody knows when the American election. And to give more insight into this, I'm being joined by Achike uh, Chude, is a global affairs analyst. Uh, it's nice to have you around, Achike, on the news. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, in light of um, former President Gulag Jonathan's call to stop off-season elections, what potential consequences does he foresee that we do not see if Nigeria continues with this practice, particularly in relation to the presidential election? Well, I'm not so sure. Uh, of course, uh, he has already said that um, if we continue like this, uh, we'll likely have an, you know, a presidential election that's off-season. And I don't know what his reasons are, but I know that um, uh, sometime in the past, when he was president, he had spoken about... Um, uh, scrapping uh, this uh, two year, this two term tenure for the presidential, uh, you know, for the presidency. And he was roundly condemned, you know, by the political class. And then some years down the line, a lot of them are beginning to talk about it. Uh, just one single tenure of six years each. And then you don't need to go for the presidency anymore uh, because of uh, all the issues associated with um, elections in the country. But uh, with regards to, to this uh, particular one, I'm not sure that, uh, after all, uh, the issue of off-cycle election, elections are supposed to be held in one day, and they were actually being held in one day until uh, we now had uh, this issue of, um, of uh, you know, um, manip manipulations of the electoral process. And uh, so the courts had to step in, and because the court, st the court stepped in, uh, you, you know, um, that is the reason why uh, we are beginning to have, um, you know, off-season uh, election. Um, so I, I'm not sure that uh, there is any serious uh, compelling reason why we should uh, stop, uh, you know, off-season elections. I'm not sure that it does any damage to uh, the country in any way, in any manner. Yes, he talks about uh, the United States, but in the United States, there are different uh, elections. Not all elections are held in one day. In America, of course, there is a bigger election, the general election, uh, with uh, elections to other public offices like uh, the houses of assembly, this you know, and then at the national level too. Uh, so it doesn't uh, really do any uh, serious damage to the body polity if we continue with the uh, off-season election. Obviously, it is a matter of um, you know uh, constitution, and so. And that's why he also urged the National Assembly also to do something about about it. But I'm not sure exactly that it is a matter of a national or, you know, um, urgency. So, so um, Achike, would, uh, if you yeah. say it, it does not have any adverse effect whatsoever, is there any positives that we can take 
when we have um, off-season elections like this. Of course, you've talked about the fact that that had to happen because of court cases and the need to ensure justice for those who were rightfully elected in those circumstances. So are there any positives that would um, give a buffer or a support to the fact that we need to still continue to have this kind of um, off-cycle elections? No, I, I'm not sure there's any great, um, you know, uh, uh, any great um, advantage, really, whether we have it or we do not have it, uh, because uh, this is uh, just um, something that uh, panders to the provisions of the Constitution. But beyond that, again, I think if there's any major advantage, I would uh, talk about it is the fact that uh, when elections are held in, in one single, you know, uh, uh, during one single, one period, a period, particular period, uh, then uh, it would also allow the electoral body, after the conduct of that uh, exercise, to do other things rather than in every few months you start preparing again. And then, of course, it becomes much more expensive. Uh, okay. Obviously, when you have elections into all the, uh, you know, positions available in the country, okay. uh, you're going to get um, greater economies of scale. You're going to save much more money. Uh, you know, then it is easier to deploy, even though the, it stretches the security forces also. Uh, but uh, you do a one-time spending, uh, you know, for what is needed during the election. Uh, so okay. I think uh, if there's any major advantage, I think that that is one way, uh, you know, of looking at it. Ajike Chude, our Global Affairs Analyst, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Now, a civil society organization and election observer group Connected Development has commended the Independent National Electoral Commission and the security agencies in the conduct of the governorship polls in Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo states on Saturday. The head of Ozabi Election Situation Room, Code, Emmanuel Njoku, who spoke on behalf of his team in Lokoja, Kogi State on Saturday, noted that with its staff sent across the three states, INEC officials arrived on time and voting in most polling units uh, was conducted in a peaceful atmosphere. He commended the efforts of the Independent National Electoral Commission, security operatives and the people and government of Kogi, Bayelsa and Imo states for their unwavering commitment to a free, fair and credible electoral process. Now to discuss this, uh, I'm being joined by Emmanuel Njoko, he's an election observer a public policy analyst and the director, Democracy and Governance Connected Development. Thank you so much for um, talking to us, Imano. Thank you for having me. So as an election observer, could you provide specific instances or examples of how the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission demonstrated effectiveness in ensuring that the smooth conduct of the governorship polls in Kogi, Bayosa, and most states were made possible? Well, um, so while we observe the elections across the three states, I personally am in Kogi State. And uh, to start, on Thursday, we were in, uh, I, arrived, I arrived in Kogi State and I was at the CBN to, to participate in the inspection of the sensitive materials. And I, and I engaged with the President Electoral Commissioner, uh, who told me specifically that, the, that one of the challenges in the elections in Kogi is deploying to some areas in Lokoja local government area that are as far as eight hours to 10 hours from, from, from the state capital secretariat. So that what they are doing is to deploy first, the sensitive materials first to Lokoja before other areas. So when it gets to the local government secretariat, they can quickly now start going to those areas that are really, really far to ensure that it gets to the racks in those areas and then they distribute timely. And we saw this happen yesterday. I was also at um, uh, what A Rack Center, which is a uh, Crowder Memorial uh, College. Uh, and that's at nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten. Uh, the SPOs at this rack, at this rack, INEC rack, had already finished uh, uh, distributing sensitive and non-sensitive materials to their presiding officers. And when we saw that, that that as at ten o'clock they had finished this process, we we are assured that of course that elections will start early the next day, and that's exactly what we saw today. So we we'll commend INEC for early deployment of elections. And you know, you know the thing about deploying, uh, starting opening polls early, when you start your polls early, I mean, it reduces uh, a lot of issues that will come, the tension from even the voters and then voting into the late night that will now lead to more violence and okay. trouble and destruction of all papers. So opening of polls early leads to any closing the polls, I mean, early enough. So we've seen all of that. And INEC, I felt, didn't want to leave any stone, anything to chance. So you are aware 
that INEC deployed nine extra regional electoral commissioners to the three states where these elections held today. Now, Emmanuel, add... Emmanuel, we had cases uh, where there, there were cases of uh, pre-filled um, sheets, result sheets. Now, if um, the um, electoral commissioner in charge of the state, uh, the state rec, says that um, there would be first deployment of electoral materials, don't you think that might just, because we don't know how they will be able to secure those materials before election begins. So don't you think that might just uh, give room for shoddiness in terms of those that may want to uh, perpetrate evil some way or um, subvert the electoral process? Well, yeah, what happened uh, is a shame and it's the downside of this, uh, this election and the whole deployment and the efforts put in by all stakeholders and even all the effort of security personnel. Uh, the, the people who did this just made a waste of government resources uh, by doing this needful. And there, so it's a shame, but then we understand that INEC has assured that they are going to investigate and people are really looking out to see that this happens. We expect, because INEC has said that the, that, 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 that the process is documented. And I believe that this thing has, that happened, there is a collusion at some point, at some okay. level of leadership of INEC. Because this thing didn't happen in one local government area, where you will see one particular electoral officer, you know, made this possible. Okay. But instead, this thing happened in five local government areas. So there was some sort of collusion with uh, some sort of, uh, at, at a particular level of leadership in INEC, down to the, some electoral officers, then down to the presiding officers. So we would expect INEC to come hard on this issue and want these people arrested and prosecuted and Nigeria should, should see them being prosecuted. Definitely, definitely we hope they will happened. do that. Uh, Emmanuel, we must say at this point that thank you so much for talking to us. Definitely we'll bring you back on some other time on our news bulletins to engage you more. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.